smoked them. There he is. What's up everybody, Alex Comstock here. Today is December 8th and I am out right now trying to kind of move a couple of trail cameras around. I'm trying to figure out where some bucks are wintering. It is officially, officially late season. We've got quite a bit of snow. Uh, we got more snow coming next week. But on this video, I want to talk about some of my favorite uh, late season hunting tips. I would say overall late season is my favorite time of the year to bow hunt. It's been when I've been most successful, um, when I've killed most of my bucks. And in this video, I'm gonna kind of talk about what I'm looking for late season, what I like, types of conditions, um, some things to be thinking about and all that jazz. So the first thing that I want to talk about is the nastier con the conditions, the better the hunting in most situations. So what I'm looking for is a lot of snow and some really cold temperatures. I have killed, whew, just going back to even like 2013, I killed a buck late December in a ton of snow and cold. I've killed a couple in North Dakota when it's been just brutally cold, a lot of snow. So what I found is the the worse the conditions, the more it's gonna condense deer movement and it's gonna group deer together. So if you can find where the deer are and you can hunt where those deer are, then your odds of success are going way up. So like in North Dakota, for example, when they're herded up, they're herded up in really, really big groups. Um, I've seen 40, 50, 60, 70 deer um, at a time in front of me in North Dakota. And it's not always gonna be like that, of course, but the point remains that um, the nastier the temp, the nastier the weather, the colder the temperatures, the more snow you get, the better. So here's finally a pretty decent set of deer tracks here. Oh, that's good. They might be staying down here a little bit more. Um, the next thing that I wanna talk about is it gets pretty redundant when talking about late season hunting, but for a good reason, and that's food sources. Food is just, it's king this time of year. Um, you know, not only are deer coming out of the rut, they need to get as much food in them as possible to kind of help restore some of their, their levels and their fat and everything. It's just straight survival mode. You're getting into the winter, you're getting into that time of year where um, deer are coming out of, you know, they go from all year, the number one thing on their mind is survival. And then you got a, you know, about a month long period where that turns to um, breeding. And then now we're getting snapped back into survival. So definitely, um, definitely want to key in on food, whether that be, you know, it depends on where you hunt, but if you can find any type of egg um, or natural browse, you know, I really like buckthorn in this, in the area that I live in. Um, it's a nasty invasive species, but deer hammer the berries on buckthorn. So any type of natural browse that you can find or egg, you know, if you can find um, standing egg, that's obviously the best. Um, or like, like a buck I killed last year in North Dakota was not a picked cornfield, but it was really poorly picked. So that's something to be looking for. And just, you know, that's really gonna be your one-two combo of, all right, well, I had to take a little pause, had some people come up and want to talk to me. Um, but I think what I've kind of covered so far is crappy conditions and food sources. Um, that's super important. I'm gonna chill up here next to one of our tree stands while I finish this video. But the next thing that I wanna talk about is understanding um, how far deer typically move in the late season. And what I like to do is like, what I'm kinda of doing right now is I'm going for a scout. I'm trying to find where deer are bedding. If you bump them out of where they're bedding once, I don't think it's that big of a deal typically. Um, but if I can figure out where deer are bedding, and then obviously hopefully you know where their food source is, you can get a really good idea of how they're getting from point A to point B and how far they're moving. Because in some areas, like, they might only move a couple hundred yards to their food source. In other areas, like out in North Dakota, they'd move a mile, but it was a pretty much across a big field and a road over to this cut corn, the nearest bedding was a mile away. So even though I was sitting a mile from where they were bedding, they, they would cover that distance in like five minutes. So 
understanding where deer bedding is important. Another thing that I want to talk about with late season is it really is how to um, how to hunt it and um, how to stay warm. Um, so like I've hunted conditions that push down all the way into negative 30, 40 degrees. When I shot my buck last year, it was like negative 40 in North Dakota. Um, and that can be dangerously cold. So with late season, for me, um, I always am layering. I'm wearing, you know, all first light layers, um, wearing their, you know, base layers that are um, merino wool. They wick moisture very well. And hardly am I ever walking to a stand or a blind wearing everything I got on. Um, I'll wear my base, la base layers and up to my bibs, but then, you know, maybe my top layer or two on the top, whether it be my sanctuary jacket and another layer, just my sanctuary jacket, I will strap to my pack and haul in with me because I'm trying to really um, not get all hot and sweated up because if you do, you're gonna get cold. And when it comes to late season hunting, you know, the colder you get, the less you're gonna be able to hunt, the less success you're gonna be able to have. So anything you can do to stay warm, um, that's something. Another thing is obviously hands and feet. When it comes to hands, I like to wear these big. They're the first light trigger mitts. I wear these as much as possible, whether I'm walking to the tree, setting up, you know, you got a little bit of dexterity with this finger so I can do stuff. And then I'll switch into, uh, I'll switch into the full length fingerless, you know, just the thin gloves like these for a while I'm sitting in the tree and then see here, I've got my hand muff and then I'll keep my hands and my hand muff during the sit. So that's how I keep my hands warm. And then the feet, I've got the lacrosse. Right now I'm wearing the lacrosse Arrowhead Sport seven millimeter boots. And then I wear a, um, it's actually an UGG sheepskin liner. Um, I wear that, it really helps wick moisture and keep my feet warm. And then I will throw on Arctic Shield booties um, when it gets really cold from sitting long temp or long durations because um, you know they really help. And you can keep your hands and your feet warm and not get all sweated up on the way to the stand. It's gonna make everything so much better for you. So pretty much when it comes to late season, really what it boils down for me is doing a lot of scouting, um, whether it be from the road, glassing boots on the ground, figuring out where deer are feeding, where they're bedding, how they're getting from point A to point B, and how can I intercept them. That's what it comes down to and putting in your time. Eventually, a buck, like where I've been hunting right now, I've been hunting my ass off in a couple spots. These deer have not been daylighting, but I know they will eventually, I just gotta be there. Um, yeah, I'm gonna hunt again and again until they daylight. And it's worked for me in the past. December can be a great time to kill a mature buck, and if you can figure one out on a pattern, whether it be scouting, you know, obviously utilizing trail cameras as much as possible, trying to keep myself up to date on what these deer are doing. Cell cams are big. Um, and then it's staying warm because there's one thing that people are afraid of in December, it's, it's cold. And for, like I said, for me, the colder it is, the more snow you get, the more it's gonna condense deer and, you know, sticking to certain deer trails with a ton of snow and the cold, it'll keep them, you know, it'll be, It'll help them move more in daylight and uh, it can really help you out. So those are some of my favorite late season hunting tips. Uh, I hope, you know, I've got about three weeks left of season. I know some states it goes into January. And if you're watching this, I hope uh, you can have some late season success this year. Appreciate you watching. Do me a huge favor, hit that like and subscribe button below. We've got more videos coming. We've got our next video will be a late season success story from my cousin Caleb in Nebraska who just shot one this week. So keep your eye out for that. Appreciate you watching. We'll see you here on the next video.